of the Kovan of Please. It's my pleasure to speak here, so it's a great conference. It's always a pleasure to be in Vietnam, so thank you very much for organizing TANK. And uh, so, so what I would like to propose is kind of uh, so ultimate solution to the functional reality problem of one of homology. So it's always difficult to sell something after a draw did, yeah, but I'll try to do my best. And uh, this is an example of something where if you think long about the stuff, you even don't need a computer at the end. But uh, so because nobody spoke so far about quantum homology, so I'll start by shortly introducing them. Then uh, the, the previous solution to this functional reality was given by Christian, so I'll explain his work in a few sentences. Or two. And then I'll show that just uh, these GL2 forms are just equivalent to what Drawer did like many years ago, probably even before the first Vietnam conference. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a list of my collaborators. So I would like to say that almost all idea in this talk is due to Chris, and also all picture I'll present. So Chris draws. So, so he he is really the main uh, draw power. Up. So after this this collaboration, uh, and he will be on the job jo job market next year, <laughs> or even this year. So. Um, so as you know, so to compute Jones polynomial, it's uh, helpful to compute first the Kaufman bracket. And the Kaufman bracket looks like this. So it's just one of the normalization. You just resolve crossing. If you resolve all crossing, you have just a collection of circles. And if you have a node diagram or leak diagram with n crossing, you will have two to the power n resolution. And you can organize this resolution, for example, in such a way that you, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, all of them will can form an n-dimensional cube, and you can put the uh, resolution where all crossings are resolved vertically. You call this zero resolutions on the left corner, and and the other diagram where all crossings are resolved in vertically. Uh, sorry, this is vertical, this is horizontally. Uh, in the other corner, and uh, here in one line, you collect all such resolution which have the same number of. Uh, um, vertical and horizontal resolution. And in this way you obtain the Kovanov cube. And you can read the Jones polynomial here just by, uh, so here, for example, you just take cube plus q minus one to the power three because you have three circles. Here you have two circles, but you have three contributions, so you, you will have this. And uh, remember that in my scan relation, I have just this minus q each time if I have one horizontal resolution. So. Uh, so say for the Jones polynomial, which you will read out of all its Kaufman brackets, more or less, uh, uh, will, uh, will be uh, read off in this way. So I think everybody knows the story. Yeah. Okay. And now, uh, so actually, uh, we perhaps not only interesting, so in category, morphism are often more interesting than the object. So therefore, it's interesting to know who are the morphism. Here. So, and the so morphism in this category of natural category associated to the links would be links cobortis. So we would like not just have numbers associated to object or polynomial associated to object, but some ma something associated to the map between them. And uh, this is what Kovana homology does. It provides you with maps, so with like uh, chain complexes associated to the links and maps between them associated to cobortism. And, uh, and here you see how it's organized. So each time if you switch only one resolution, you have an arrow. And this arrow is just a cobordism, which uh, just settle cobordism, which uh, exactly does the switching of, of, of a resolution. And uh, in this way, you can associate some chain complex in a, a category of cobordism, uh, so basically a category of two cobordisms. Uh, and it would be perhaps a little bit too optimistic to think that already this chain complex can give you an open variant, so it doesn't hold. But uh, perhaps if you and uh, homology of this complex will, you and uh, to, to compute homology, you cannot just uh, work with, a with this uh, with this uh, with this complex because it's a non-abelian category of topomorphism. So what you need actually is this. Uh, two-dimensional TQT, which sends its cobordism to vector spaces. 
But these two-dimensional PQFTs are greatly understood, so they uh, should associate two circles and vector spaces to two circles uh, tensor power, such that the composition uh, correspond to the composition P and this, so just composition of linear maps. And actually, uh, the point is that you understand everything about two cobordism, you know the generators, you know the relations, and uh, so actually this, uh, this relation, it's the associativity relation, so it's, it's, there is a very nice algebra which exactly defined by this relation and uh, these generators, which is called Frobenius algebra. And you see here, this was M in draw stock and this is delta of draw stock. There is unit, co-unit, M and delta, so this is, uh, uh, <coughs> it's not a bi-algebra, so the difference is uh, that you impose Frobenius relation instead of uh, some other relation which you use. The co-product is the algebra morphism, this is what you need for, for bi-algebra. But anyway, what you have here is that uh, any uh, uh, two-dimensional two QFT actually comes from, from such a Frobenius algebra. And in Kovanov cases, uh, Frobenius algebra is that one, so it's just uh, uh, polynomial and one variables quotient by the x square. So you could quotient perhaps by a little but by any polynomial of second order. So this will be more general. It, it will be uh, it will provide also Lie theory and uh, such a such a TQFT provides uh, a functor which we are looking for and uh, as Dror said such things in mathematics are more complicated usually so usually it's uh, so you put some grading on the thing so if you grade this one by uh, putting one in degree plus one and x in degree minus one, then actually you observe that this functor is even a graded functor. So it's uh, if you grade the category of cobordism by all the characteristic and vector spaces, uh, as I told you, then this functor will preserve the grading, and this means that homology will be graded invariant. And actually, this means that uh, you, you obtain the following package. So to each link, you can associate a chain complex such that the Euler characteristic is a Jones polynomial, homology is a B-graded link invariant, and, uh, and the problem which I would like to speak today is just the problem is with this sign. So clearly you can associate to any link cobordism a map between quantum complexes, and you're doing this by because any link cobordism also composes from pieces which are just caps, cups, or saddles, and uh, you also need some maps uh, for randomized moves, but everything uh, is provided already in the proof that homology is a link invariant. So you already have maps which correspond to all to all randomized moves. So if you take all this together, you obtain this uh, this this uh, induced map as star on one of homology. But the point is that uh, it's not invariant under movie moves. So there are, there are some uh, isotopies which you can draw as a movie moves uh, on link diagrams. And uh, if it would be just functorial one homology, then you would not have, uh, so all mo movie moves will correspond to the identity moves on one homology, it's not always identity. Sometimes there are some signs which are coming up. And uh, this was, uh, so nevertheless, Kovan homology is an interesting invariant. So it uh, provides a low bound for genus and also detects the unknowns, uh, which we doesn't know about the Jones polynomial. So therefore, it's worth to study this invariant. And the question is how to get rid of these signs, or how to understand why these signs come coming from and also where is the origin. And it was quite a lot of works on on this uh, topic. So different people like Scott Morrison, and uh, so for the moment, it's, uh, the problem is already solved even for the, for the GLN. But uh, so for SL2, so the first, oh, okay, I wanted also to say that um, actually, uh, instead of uh, looking really on these vector spaces, what you can ask yourself, is there any category or some quotient, whether you can construct a quotient of this uh, category of graded to cobordism such that uh, uh, <coughs> uh, the, the map will not have any kernel anymore. Yeah. So you basically all, all uh, relation in the kernel of this uh, thing looks as follows of this TQFT. It looks like a uh, sphere relation, so you should associate, so you associate uh, zero to, um, to a sphere. So this means just one half of a torus 
uh, it gets associated one, so neck cutting relation and dot reduction relation. So the, if you uh, divide your category of graded cobortism by this relation, then you obtain a uh, Barnatan category, so he defines this for the first time. And, um, and this category, um, basically, uh, you can work with, with this category instead of working with uh, TQFT because actually uh, the, uh, the TQFT is just a tautological TQFT on this Barnett category. So this means tautological means that uh, space associated to a circle is just a space of all maps from, uh, from uh, empty object to circle. And so this will be, in this case, it will just cap and cap with the dot survives in the case. So there are two dimensional space associated. It's, the grading is also plus one and minus one as previously. So this exactly provides, uh, provides you the, the quantum QT we, we, we have looked before. Okay. And now uh, to improve uh, this functoriality, so the uh, solution of Christian was to look, instead of looking for bordism, you need to look at forms. And forms means that you modify the, the relation by, uh, the scan relation, by imposing these two relations which involve these uh, three valent vertices. So you, can, you, you should think about the three valent vertices as a flow going up. So they are all oriented going up. And this is double H, this red double H means that actually I have two lines joining there together and then going out. OK? And, uh, and if you work with this scan relation, then uh, you you don't have just links. So if you resolve all crossing, you don't just have uh, circles, uh, blue circles. You will have something which also has some uh, red edges. So and this something is called uh, web. So it's a trivalent graph with uh, edges colored blue and and red. And the relation here, looking like this, so it's on the blue part, you have exactly the same relation as you had before. But now you have something new coming from these red edges. So for example, an exercise would be to using this relation to, to prove such, uh, such identities. OK. And now, uh, if you would like to consider cobordism between such verbs, so they are called forms, they will also it will not be just uh, surfaces, blue surfaces, it will be singular surfaces, so they will have parts which are looking like this. So this singular part is called built buildings, and uh, everything here is oriented, and uh, the orientation on this, sorry, on this binding is uh, exactly opposite from the orientation induced by the red facet. Okay, so this is, this is just a convention. Okay, and if you uh, now look at the relation which you, uh, so to construct an analog of Barnett-Tan category, then the relation would be exactly the same as we had before on the, on the blue part. And on the red part, we will have this relation, so we, we can move a dot through such a surface, uh, uh, red facet, by getting a sign. Uh, so this neck cutting relation is much simpler than here, but it's uh, involved a sign. And also sphere, it can be removed, but at cost of a sign. So these are exactly the origin of all these signs which make quantum homology non-functorial. And uh, there are also further relation which are uh, looking like this. So you can detach this uh, cylinder. And depending on the orientation of binding, you, can, you may get sign or may not get a sign. And the same for, for these uh, two red facets. So you, you, can, you can move it up from this plane. And again, depending on the rotation, there is, there is or there is no sign. So you can imagine how annoying it is to, to work with such relation. Uh, so this is just a small rule to remember. So if you remember that uh, orientation on the red surface uh, facet is exactly uh, opposite to the, to the binding, then you use uh, right hand rule, uh, and you see that exactly in the case when the orientation on the red part, uh, <coughs> the, the normal uh, looks outside of the of the facet. In this case, you uh, by 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 applying this relation, you don't get signed, and if the orientation is inside, uh, you you will have some signs. Okay, and now uh, let me just present the main result. So the main result is that. Uh, assume we have some uh, collection of points, which is just uh, oriented blue and uh, red points, such that sigma b is a, uh, it's a part of, 
only viewpoints. Then you can consider this category of, po of forms where the, uh, the objects are webs with uh, sigma as a boundary, and, uh, and morphism are forms in, in the disk time, an interval, also with sigma, so staying with the boundary. Now, if you forget completely the red part of such a form, then you get the Barnatan category sitting on just this blue point, and just the blue part of my, of my form. Uh, then in this case, uh, so in a second, I'll construct for you a functor from this Barnatan category in the form category, and also its inverse, so that actually these Barnatan forms, which are just completely forgetting about any, any red things, are just, in, this, this is just an equivalent of category. And this is not an abstract equivalence, it's not their existence, but it's, it's an explicit construction. So basically, it's, it says you can, uh, you can walk through so this Barnatan category. There is a precise way how do you associate a sign to each cobordism, and with this sign, your theory is completely factorial. So this is, this is what I would like to, to speak about for the next half an hour. So and now, how, how does it work? So, for example, already I think Poel with uh, Aaron and so you observe in your paper that if you just do it stupidly, if you just forget about red parts completely, then it will not be a uh, functor. So such, 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 such. Sorry? I said thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so the construction, uh, involves something which we call shadings. So shading can be defined for any n-dimensional manifold. So here's the definition for the B3. So for the, for the three ball, this is a union of two possibly intersecting surfaces. One is a non-oriented blue surface and an oriented red one. So basically you just, you, you uh, okay. And uh, together with the checkboard coloring of the connected components of their complement. So uh, it was a checkbox. So there is a checkbox coloring on my on my on my uh, file, but there is it's completely invisible here. And uh, so I'll explain this definition one dimension lower. So I'll dis uh, it's it's it can be done in any dimension. It's true in any dimension. What I'll say, but so let me explain this in two dimensions. So for a disk, uh, so shading of a disk, it would be. Uh, um, in this, uh, so it's just a collection of uh, co-dimension one strata. So this will be just line here, co-dimension one, and just lines in, in dimension two, uh, such that the red part is oriented and the blue one is not oriented, together with the shadings. And uh, so the region which uh, with these arrows, these are region which are which are white in my in my uh, checkbook coloring, which you cannot see. And the other region are black. So this is so I choose here this uh, this co-dimension one submanifold together with these shadings. So this is the uh, this, uh, sorry together with this checkboard coloring uh, and these things I call ch shading. Okay. And now uh, I I'll describe for you the, the map gamma from this shading to the to so so which will uh, reproduce my form out of this shading. Okay, and to reproduce the form, I'm doing the following. I'm looking at the orientation induced. So on the white region, I always have the standard counterclockwise orientation. So this is the white region standard orientation, and I'm looking on which part of this red uh, line the standard orientation agrees with the actual orientation of this line. And I see that on this line it agrees. So I I, I leave this part exactly as it is. But on that part, it doesn't agree. So, uh, so, so here, the orientation induced by this thing doesn't agree with the chosen orientation on the red part. So therefore, they kill each other this two orientation, and I don't see this part here. And the same is for that. Also here, the orientation, the chosen one will be in this, in this way, but the one induced from the white region is a different one. So this disappear and so on. And in this way, you kill you kill uh, exactly part of the surfaces in a way that what you get is it, it's a bad. But there is a map gamma which you, so and basically this map can be reversed. So what I can explain to you, it's also uh, uh, 
it's also, so first of all, all webs are in the image of the combat, and that I can reconstruct. So if you give me a web together with the shading of the boundary of this web, so it's again, it's again uh, a choice here of co-dimension one uh, sub-manifold, which will be just points here, which oriented uh, in two different ways, so black and blue will correspond to the oriented, and the shading of the region, which correspond to the black, white, black, white, black, white. So I choose a shading on the boundary, and I choose a web, and out of this information, I can reconstruct uh, <coughs> Uh, the, the shading inside inside of this web. Okay? And this goes uh, in the following way again. So I am choosing orientation on black and white region. On the white, it's always a standard orientation counterclockwise. So all white region are counterclockwise, all black region are the opposite one. So this is this is uh, this produces this picture. And now I'm uh, I'm looking so on the <coughs> on each region, so for example, let me look at this region, and you see that uh, the orientation on the boundary is a standard orientation. So therefore, in this region, I do not change anything. However, if I look on this region, then I see here the standard orientation, and on these two edges, the orientation is opposite. So what I'm doing, I'm double these two edges, so sorry, exactly, I'm double these two edges and push them inside. I'm getting this line. And I'm shading this uh, new region black. So I'm shading this region, it's not a white region. Okay, then I'm, I'm taking this guy, here it's a standard orientation, but these two, two, two edges again are non-standard, again I'm doubling them, pushing inside, I'm getting this line and again shading this region. I'm doing this everywhere, so perhaps let us look in this region also. So here it's all orientation on all edges, it's opposite one, so it's not counterclockwise, it's clockwise. So I'm pushing all edges inside and I'm getting this one and it should be shaded, the outside of this thing should be shaded. And this is the opposite of this of the map gamma, which I explained to you before. And, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, shadings, uh, so basically it has a lot of consequences. So for example, that all tangles and cobordism extend to webs and formed with a given boundary. So basically, uh, you can give me, prescribe me a boundary, you can give me the blue part of the cobordism you would like to see, and I can construct you using, using the tools uh, a form, yeah, which is a priori kind of difficult thing. And basically the idea, so let me come to the relation. So the idea here is, uh, so already here, the idea actually of Chris was that so what you see on this picture is not quite an isotopy because you, there is something secretly, so secretly there is a, a red line going here. And if you, if you add this red line, then what you see is just the isotopy. Yeah, and this is what really happens, but just this isotopy, depending on the, uh, the relation, this orientation, is the, and, uh, and I don't know, so I believe in representation theory for me, why? So, this, this, uh, so what we had before, it was representation theory of SL2. But basically what we are doing, actually, we are doing uh, a picture in the centralized algebra of SL2. But actually the short while duality happens to be uh, really with GL2 and not SL2. So therefore we need to work, so, so like uh, this picture can be only drawn for GL2. And uh, okay, and one should just draw this in the correct way. In the correct way, it would be here to remember. So or here, for example, look, you can you can just prolongate this to a full, you complete it to a full circle, and then clearly you can move, move it apart. Yeah, and you should by moving, you should you you the only thing you can happen is you can pick a sign. Nothing else can happen. Yeah, and and then you delete this circle by one, and clearly you have this relation. Yeah, and the same for forms. So there is no difference. It's just one dimension higher, but it's exactly the same. So basically, what you should think, it's not just a cylinder. There is a cap here. There is secretly a cap, and you just uh, all the relation. Uh, so here, you can also think about about cups here, and then the relation could be just as okay. And this is what uh, I actually I wanted to tell you next. That exactly that. Uh, on shadings, you have these isotopies, and the whole theory uh, stayed invariant up to sign on, under such isotopies, so they are looking like this. And uh, this isotopy, so Christian gave us a very uh, involved formula how to evaluate closed form. Yeah, But with these techniques, you, you actually don't need it, 
because you, you, you can just, given a closed form, I construct a shading for this closed form, so I complete every, the form to the just intersection of two surfaces, and using this uh, isotopies, I can just take these two surfaces apart from each other and then evaluate each one with the corresponding TQFT. There is absolutely no problem. And, uh, and this uh, allows you, for example, to show that, okay, now uh, considering now not closed surfaces, but closed, but surfaces with the same blue part and the same boundary, then actually <coughs> these two are, are actually the same up to sign. Okay? And any form, uh, which is uh, which blue part is just blue surface times an interval is invertible. So these things you 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 get just for free. And now I'm coming to the construction of the functor which I promised to you. So I promised a functor which will embed Barnatan theory. Uh, so Barnatan coordinates with sigma v as a boundary into any form with sigma as a boundary. Yeah. And what you do, so you put your sigma on a circle. You need to choose somewhere a base point. So I choose it here, so this is a base point. And what I'm doing, I'm just going around the boundary, so counterclockwise, and I'm looking whether the orientation alternate. If they alternate, I do nothing. So if I see here minus and plus, everything is great, and I'm, I'm going farther, but here I, I need another plus, so here it's not alternation. So I need to add additional point here, which is with minus sign. I do this, then I'm continuing, everything is great, everything is great, here's again two pluses. Again, I add a point here, and then I continue, I continue, everything is great. So you see, I added this point, and I added this point. And then I'm, uh, so I'm choosing the shading of the boundary uh, standardly, yeah, like uh, black, black and white region. And, uh, and, and then what I'm doing, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the angulus, where on the blue part, the coordinates is just identity. So on the blue point, the coordinates is just, uh, just this straight line. And, uh, and all the uh, red points, I connect between each other because with this added point, I can do this. And then the orientations will give me uh, uh, the, this, this, uh, so which, which part of this line is dashed and which, which is not. Okay, so, so this basically it's possible always and this is essentially in this construction. So, uh, and then uh, you give me uh, cobortism with this blue boundary I inserted in, uh, inside of this angulus and that is my point. Again, this function for any sigma, for, okay, sigma should be balanced in the sense of balance means that it's, uh, it's, it's bound to that. So this means that if you, okay, if you remember GL2, then this blue, blue points, uh, sorry, this red points they have, depending on the sign, weight plus two or minus two, and the blue points they have weight plus one or minus one. So this was the degree of the QFT which I defined before. If you sum all them together, it should be zero. This whole balance. Otherwise, if it's not balanced, it doesn't bound anywhere. So, okay. And now uh, I'm coming to the to the inverse function, which is perhaps the most interesting because uh, so uh, to construct Kovanov homology is so either you walk from the beginning with form. Or you walk, as I proposed, with this cobordism, this nice one of original picture. But in this way, you need to modify. So you 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 are, so you, you basically forget about so the, the inverse functor to, to, to the one I did from form to the Barnatan category. What it does, it just forget red part for for verbs. And it also forget the red part for cobordism, but this happens only up to a sign. And the question is, how do you define this sign? And the sign is actually defined uh, by making this diagram commutative. And what is this diagram? So basically, you, you take a web uh, and you take a form S between two different webs. And uh, before you're doing this, you choose for each web an invertible form. So I told you that this form is just uh, uh, identity on the blue part. So any such form is invertible. So it's identity on the blue part, and it's uh, something, uh, some, some caps on the red part. So after choosing this form, you, you, um, uh, so you, you have this form 
going from the image of this VB under my, my, my function before, going to the my things, uh, to, to the web, and, uh, and here the same way. So this is invertible. So therefore, I can compute sign here, which uh, by comparing the cobordism, which is composition of Z1, Z1, and the, this is just the uh, mirror, so, uh, uh, so reversing the time in this, in this functor. So this is invertible thing. You can compose them and uh, just compute the sign. So this, uh, this is easy to do. We provided basis exactly for, for so it's, you can show it does not depend on this E omega. So it's, uh, uh, we provide for like uh, standard cobordism a list of such a sign. OK, so this is uh, how you forget coherently about the red facet. And now um, I'm coming to this tautological TQFT, uh, which I described before. So where you are in uh, Barnatan world, you, you basically you just associate to any circle you associate in this TQFT either a cap or a cap with a dot. Yeah, so this is, this is just tautological TQFT. So how does it really look in this new picture? So, uh, so remember that we have everything is oriented in this picture. And if we have uh, a counterclockwise oriented circle, then in this case, uh, so we have to, to pass to the shading. And the shading means that I, I choose a, a checkbook coloring of all regions. So here there are two regions outside and inside. We always have a, a convention that outside region is always white. So it has a counterclockwise orientation. And this orientation should reduce the orientation of the circle. If it's so, then, uh, then uh, the shading it just exactly looks exactly the same as, uh, so it's just, uh, just like this. And uh, this completion is the same as the shading. Yeah, so it's just it's like on opposite. So shading is usually given, and you construct a web from there. And the opposite, uh, opposite procedure we call completion of, of a web into such a shading. And now if you, if you look at the at the tautological TQFT in the, in, in the, for the forms, then again you will, you will find the basis of uh, tautological TQFT given by the cap and cap with the dot. However, if the orientation on this circle is opposite, then you need to find a different completion because now the orientation from the white region, which we agreed is the outside region, is not, uh, does not induce the orientation of the circle. So to produce this new, uh, um, new orientation, we need to find this fake uh, uh, red line encircling this one, because then the region between this red and blue, it will be shaded, and then the induced orientation will be exactly the one which we have here. And now you see, so if you, if you use uh, our construction, uh, then, uh, then you need first to close all red things, uh, and make identity on the blue guy, and then uh, close the blue guy in all possible ways. So this means that in this case, uh, the basis will be provided by such a guy, and this guy is short, which you can compute, and this is the origin of a sign. Okay, so this is uh, how it is, uh, so this is just an example. And now, uh, perhaps, I don't know how much time do I have, but uh, actually, uh, uh, why we are doing all this? Because we wanted to have a factorial theory. Uh, uh, so basically, we wanted factorial quantized annular homology because it has a very nice properties, and we constructed the theory using uh, Kovanov theory of tangles, uh, also so with uh, Stefan Berlin Chris before. And this was the origin why we came back to these things and regarded it again. And um, I don't know how many people uh, knows about uh, Kovanov homology for tangles. But uh, so he defining so-called algebra. So this is called Kovanov algebra. And then uh, so it's uh, this algebra is associated to some number of points. So given given this number of points, so Kovanov says that we can associate to them all possible way or uh, all possible crossing list matching between these points. So basically. For four points, there are only these two. And then uh, we reflect one of them and put it on the top of the other. 
and now we apply the QFT to this and we have some vector space associated to this guy. And now giving two such uh, such guys, so with the same part, with the same part in the middle, I can multiply them. So I'm just reflecting. Uh, so whom do I want to take? So, okay. Let me take the same one. Okay. So so if I have two such guys, I would like to multiply them, and this is done by by applying. Here, settle, so settle cobordism, so you see here there is a coban of uh, zx mod x square, so there is this delta map connecting them, and here again the settle cobordism, which will at the, at the end bring me in the picture like this. And this is a multiplication in the algebra, so given this element a and this b, and this will be the, multi the multiplication. And uh, so uh, the coban of homology for tangles is defined, uh, so for each tangle you associate a bimodule over, so basically bimodule over this, all this cl closing. Yeah, and then the maps are given in the usual sense as it was before. So this is, this is a construction. And I'm just saying, uh, I, I would like to finish by saying that actually we have the same construction in this form world, and it goes in the form, so we have, we call it a red over blue basis for maps. So again, so you, you, you have any balanced collection of points. Again, you see uh, where this, so, so you, you, you should actually imagine that this is on the circle. So if you have minus here and minus here, you should, uh, it's not alternating orientation, so you should add something. So, so you add, you first add additional points everywhere, then you construct a shading. You don't see the shadings, but here there is a choice of I think this region is shaded, this region is shaded, so this is a shading. And then you remove the things which, uh, where the orientation disagree, you, you, you get a, a web. And, and after this, you choose all possible way to, uh, to all possible uh, crossing this magic between the blue part. So this is an analog of the of the Kovan of, of the Kovan of, uh, uh, crossing this magic, which I explained before. And now you can again put them on the top of the other and compute the multiplication. So this is an analog of the Kovanov algebra for H2. Again, so everything really, uh, really computable. And then uh, uh, you, 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 you have, because, because of the equivalent theorem which we had before, so you, you, you can basically use any theorem about the original Kovanov algebra and uh, just it will hold for this one. So for example, we computed Hochschild homology for this algebras which we needed in the construction of the angular, quantized angular homology. And basically the, the output wa was that we have a quantum of quantized angular GL2 homology, which is triply graded, strictly functorial, and so on. And uh, again, the, the idea why we were interested in this, because uh, there is this problem of understanding uh, categorification of uh, color in Jones polynomial. And for color Jones polynomial, before it was two constructions, one of the crucial Cooper, who is just category finds the Jones Venter projector. And perhaps everybody of you knows that the Jones Venter projector has a denominator. And if you uh, would like to category five, you cannot work with the denominator, so you expand this in geometric series, and you have an infinite complex which corresponds to any Jones Venter projector. And this, uh, another construction is uh, due to Kubana, which is based on like cabling. You cable your knot and you view annually each time if you, uh, if you would like to pass to a smaller cabling. And this is a finite construction, this is infinite construction, so they never coincide, except for our quantized setting and when this parameter is generic. So, so I think this will be the next paper where we will relate the Kubana finite construction and this Krushkal uh, Cooper categorification of the of the colored Jones in this uh, angular setting. Thank you very much. Are there questions, comments? Yeah. Sorry. So your equivalent statement, if I understood it correctly, is for a disk with some fixed boundary. Uh, no, no, no. So, no, no. So we have we have an equivalent of two categories, actually. So uh, this is just a part. So this is this is just a part of the theorem, uh, but basically it's uh, it, it provides that you can you just need to extend the partner time categories. You just take a product with Z. 
yeah, it's just because the GL2 weights, uh, they, uh, these are two, uh, two integers and not just one integer. Yeah, so you just uh, extend with these, this tells you, if you give me, for example, a collection of three blue points, mm -hmm. this uh, additional integer tells me how many mm -hmm. red ones I need to add. And uh, starting from, from that one, I can construct the whole uh, uh, equivalence really of two categories. So, yeah, so I want to ask yeah. whether this equivalent are compatible with the planar equivalent that Joy is also describing in this paper. So if you say it works for those two categories, that will So it should be here. So I think so, yeah. I think so. So this is what we are actually doing with this, uh, with, with the annulus, yeah. Yeah. So, so we, I, we didn't work out so more, more circles, but at least for the annular, for, for the for the annulus, you can really insert and this is completely compatible. Yeah. But good point. Yeah. Other question? Uh, can I ask a um, very very philosophical bigger question? Um, you have pancreas. Uh, what's good for pancreas in common homology? Sorry, what is? What is good for pancreas? Of ah, so because use, uh, exactly because be because then you can compose things without so and uh, so so for example um, if you would like to uh, if you have a node cobordism or you would like to compute the genus of a node yeah so you you would like to 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 have a map which is induced by by some cobordism on the Kubana homology yeah and you would like for example like uh, degree of this map will give you kind of a lower lower bound on the on the on the genus. So such things are usually are uh, very important. So they are very hard to obtain by other means than such um, such techniques. So. Other question? Uh, with this question, in fact, uh, do we have uh, invariant of uh, surfaces in dimension four? Because if you take Sure. So, uh, sure. I mean, uh, sure. non-trivial. Can we compute those? So, for example, so one one output of this quantum quantization of this angular. So, I think I think uh, so. If you just compute in drawer setting, uh, invariant of any close uh, close surface linked or whatever, so it would be plus or minus one if I don't. But but if you quantize this, so this quantum angular setting, so you, for example, so what uh, what you obtain for link times is one, it will be the Jones polynomial of this link. So, so this is this is clearly. A and the new, do we have new ones? <laughs> Here you you recover some the Jones. No, so the other one much of compute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Other question. Right, thank you again.